So you guys remember my buddy Ralph with the blown Roadrunner? How you doing, Ralph? Hey, man. What's going on? Nothing much. Just staying busy. People often ask about that car. Still there. Still there? Yeah. Still what have you gone with it so far? <laughs> Broke a drive shaft last time I went out. Oh, yeah, you showed me the video of that. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's, it's like solidly in the tens. It's a stock 440 with a 671 blower on it. 871. 871. 871. The yeah. big guy. So I'm here at Streetside Classics in Laverne, Tennessee. Ralph does a lot of work for these guys. And he texted me yesterday, the day before yesterday, and he says, I got a Hemi car that I'm having a little bit of problem with. As he knows, I have this 40 plus year love-hate relationship with Hemi's, mostly hate. But I says, I'll come and take a look at it. Well, as it turns out, this car is just absolutely gorgeous, right? I, I'm in love, I'm in love. Now, usually, we talk about these places, used car dealers, consignment dealers, and so on and so forth, and it's always something negative. And I don't want to always come off as negative, because sometimes a car like this pops up. And I have walked back and forth and climbed around under this car, and I could tell you if there's anything wrong with this, it's that it's over-restored. It's just a little too clean. There is, a, there is a little deviation from stock under the hood, and we'll get to that in a minute. But this car is just spectacular. What do you think of this thing, Ralph? It's great. I love it. I love it. All right, so let's do a walk around of this car. And let's start at the very back, because this is... Okay, when you're dealing with any 1968 coronet-bodied car, the coronet, Super B, RT, any of them, the trunk lid is is your real telltale on these now this trunk lid i know it's going to sound crazy now this trunk lid is the hardest to find most expensive body panel in the whole world of classic mopars i've seen them go for up to two thousand dollars and for the reason for that is that they rotted from the factory like right that doesn't work yeah okay, okay. they uh they rotted out back here it was just a defect in in the design right and they changed it in 69 but this one is pristine, it's perfect, it's never been messed with, it's real. Just looking around the details of this car, I mean, they did such a nice job restoring this thing. Possibly, like I said, over restored. Everything in this car is just primo. So let's get something straight now. This, I'm not doing an assessment of the car like as if, as if like here go buy this car because i cannot vouch for what's under the sheet metal i'm assuming what's under the sheet metal is good but i'm not here with a magnet and i'm not here to like uh you know scrutinize all of the the places where damage might be hidden so if you're interested in this car or you know somebody who might be interested in this car you need to inspect it yourself this isn't the purpose of this video i just want to show you a really cool car so yeah the trunk lid is perfect on the car it's very hard to find. The color. Now remember, no, no high impact colors in 1968. Those didn't start coming in until 1969, and then by 1970 it had all of them. But in the 68, this is this is just regular yellow, Dodge yellow, and uh, it just it fits the car. It's perfect. Uh, other external details on this thing. So obviously it's got the right stripes and all of that. It has the right wheels. So keep keep in mind, 1968, 1966 and 67, there were no 15 inch wheels available on B bodies. 1968, they started making the 15 inch wheels available for the B body. Now, all Hemi cars, 1968, 69 Hemi cars, came with these wheels, regular stamped normal looking wheels and they all had these hubcaps this is the 1967-1968 Dodge hubcap this is for all A, B and uh, e body, uh, C body cars and you got the F70 redline tires so this is how the car would have come from the factory the road wheels the Magnum 500s that you see on a lot of these cars, none of the Hemi cars ever came off the assembly line with those wheels. Those wheels could have been added by the dealer, 
but all 1968 69 hemi cars came with these wheels and the dog dish hub caps is standard equipment or you could get the full wheel covers most guys when they bought these cars were going to put aftermarket wheels on them with Kragers or slots or whatever it happened to be so they would order the cars just not spec anything on on the wheels and this is how they came with their small hubcaps you could order these with the full wheel covers but that is the way the car is supposed to look all right um 1968 only see here's way this is where you get into these like weird moporisms the black plastic door buttons 1968 only and then of course the lock position, the lock button position, 1968 only. 68 is back here, and then in 69, they moved it up here. And the reason being is that when the windows are rolled up, it's easy to pop this thing up to get into the car. So they moved it forward as a theft prevention thing in 69. So that's that's all 1968 only stuff. The car is a hard top. So all Coronet RTs were hard tops in 1968. All Super Bs were coupes, you know, with the post, and all RTs were hard tops. And this one has, this one has the optional rally gauge cluster. So this is the correct 1968 rally gauge cluster. Now here's an interesting thing with these cars. The RT came standard with the 150 mile an hour sweep speedo. The Super B came standard with this Rally or Charger Dash, but for the RT, it was optional. So it came with the Sweep, 150 mile an hour Speedo, same as the GTX, it's standard equipment, and then you could order this. And this one has the Tick Tock Tack, so it's got the clock in the center and an attack on the outside. Regular AM radio, it's got the console, which was optional on this, the floor shift console. These things came standard with uh, column shift. And the car is just beautiful. And this is the correct texture for a 68. It's got these vertical lines, 69 and 70 have the pebble grain. So it just, it's just perfect. It's missing the little, uh, there's, there's supposed to be a little round fratzog that goes over here. So that's, that's what this blank space is, it's missing that piece but that's an easy enough thing to add to it. And uh, just, just beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. All right, and, and uh, the, the body and the paintwork on this car is just absolutely first rate. Everywhere you look, they did a beautiful job on it. Ralph, let's pop the hood. Hemi, yeah, I love these things, I hate these things. And Ralph and I are gonna put our heads together and figure out why it's got some running issues. Minor things, but just the same. So, 1968, there was no air grabber assembly or fresh air system available for 1968. So all the 1968 Hemi cars have the chrome dome air cleaner. Chargers always had the chrome dome up until 1970 because the Charger was never available with any type of air grabber. But the uh, the Coronets, the, the, the Super Bs and the RTs, 69 came with the Ram Charger hood and that oval air cleaner, it's open element. But the 68, all 68 Hemi cars had this chrome dome air cleaner. And looking around, the car's got the right, it's got the right everything on it, right? The right valve covers, that's the right booster, the right just, and everything under the hood is just beautiful. Um, but my, now, here, here's my only gripe, okay? So they deviated from a couple of things stock under the hood of this car. They're not bad deviations, but you know, you have to say to yourself, why, right? So the alternator is a 1970 and newer dual field style, and it has a 1970 and newer voltage regulator. Not a big deal, not a big deal. It is a better system, but this should have had the single field and a point regulator. Again, not a big deal. Uh, the distributor was changed, so this car originally would have had a, a Presto Light dual point distributor, and this one has an after the uh, direct connection aftermarket regular electronic distributor. 
So, and they're calibrated differently, which is one of the things Ralph and I were talking about before. These distributors calibrated differently than the stock Hemi ones. And so when you set these things at the factory uh, timing, you know, or for idle, you don't get full advance. So there's a special way to time these things. And then the other thing I noticed here is that the car has a voltage, a, uh, a fuel pressure regulator added. Um, it has, it has the right mechanical pump underneath, but they added a fuel pressure regulator for whatever reason. But yeah, it's got the right, the right bull nose hose clamps. Just the details on this car. If there's, if there's anything, if I consider anything wrong with this, it's that the car is like over restored. And you can always tell when a car, we were just looking at one inside that uh, has a lot of pitting here. Like you can always tell when a car was like revived, you know, and this one, you could tell this was original. There was no, there's no like butchery or, or pitting or anything hiding under this paint. This is good, beautiful, solid metal. Nice job, nice job. So, last night, I showed Kathy, I says, uh, I says, I'm going to go look at this car in it. So, I brought up the pictures of it on, on the Streetside Classic website. And she looks at the car and she says, just go buy it. And I'm like, no, I can't, there's just no way. I can't buy this car. I, I love this car too much. I, I would never be able to enjoy it. I would freak out every time like a, a cloud passed or a bird flew past. I love this car and I love that it belongs to somebody else. Um, no, just real quick, let me, let's go under the car for a minute just to show you guys. So under the back of the car, we have the right resonators. And if you look over on the passenger side there, you see the leaf spring, so it's got the extra leafs. That's, that's a true Hemi suspension. Eight and three quarter rear, as it should be. It's got the right tips. And just look at the detail on this car. This, this, this is a jewel. This car is a jewel. And then, let's go around the front. Underneath here, we have sway bar the hemi skid plate so that skid plate went on all 426 hemi cars because the oil pan hangs down lower it's got a six quart pan so it hangs down a little bit a hair lower than the the bottom of the stock k-frame so chrysler added these skid plates to them and this also has the torque boxes all hemi cars have torque boxes and those nascar reinforcement boxes that are on the very back the sway bar has got the factory Okay, it's uh, okay. Those are those are the later model. The car's got disc brakes on it, but those are not the original ones. The original style. Those are the later style. But again, not a big deal. Just a beautiful car. And then it's got the it's got the Hemi oil cooler. Let's, let me get up here. All 426 Hemi automatic cars came with this transmission cooler mounted just like that did I mention how much how in love I am with this car yet so I'm gonna put this GoPro down now and Ralph and I are gonna put our heads together and screw around with this a little bit and if there's anything like really interesting that we come across i think it's just minor tuning issues if there's anything really interesting we come across in the course of it i'll, I'll do a follow video on it, a video on us but what do you think i stuck it you guys <laughs> you got when are you taking out another race car you got the barracuda in i got the barracuda but i gotta finish the charger project before i mess with anything oh uh, we gotta we gotta drop it on his charger yeah project. mama's all over me over that 71 Dutch Charger. 383? 383 automatic uh, air conditioned car. Yeah, like it's a loaded car. It's it's, it's nice. Has. All right. Well, that's it. I just hope you guys enjoyed the tour of this 
beautiful, beautiful car. I keep telling him he needs to take it home. No, <laughs> no, somebody else has to take that home and care for it the way it's supposed to be cared for. I, you know, I love these things, but I'm not a caretaker. I'm, I'm too much of an animal. <laughs> That's it, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Later, guys.